Hey everybody, Dr. Mike Gadney with Sport Horse Chiropractic. And today I had a client who didn't quite understand the anatomy of the knee, uh, what, the, what the knee does, how it moves. Um, and I want to take a few minutes to go over the anatomy of the knee, talk about, you know, is it even a knee to begin with, and what type of motions occur at the knee. A lot of times when we have problems with one of the front legs, we assume it's mostly a shoulder problem um, or something's wrong with the foot, you know, like you might have an abscess or, you know, laminitis or what have you. But I think many of the problems that occur in the front legs have to do with accessory motions and lack thereof. So I want to discuss the anatomy of the knee, uh, talk about the joints in the knee and what type of movements occur there and just give you an overall better understanding of your horse's anatomy. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so let's talk about the anatomy of the knee. So first of all, as you probably guessed, this is not an actual knee to begin with. In order for a joint to be a knee, it has to contain one physical element, which is a kneecap. And this joint does not have a kneecap. In fact, the only joint in the horse that does have a kneecap, which makes it an actual knee, is the stifle. So, I think because you know we consider uh, quadrupeds to have four legs, we just named the anatomical parts of the leg according to um, leg anatomy. So, but in fact, the front legs of a horse are our arms. So we have to look at the anatomy in terms of what type of anatomical part would we find in an arm of a human and compare that to the anatomical parts of a horse. And so if you look at the skeleton of a horse and you take a look at the joints, you'll notice that they're very similar to the joints of our hands, elbows, and shoulders. So when we're looking at the knee, when we're looking at the knee, what we're actually looking at is a wrist. In fact, we call these, we call this the carpus, and we call the two rows of bones that make up the, carp the carpus, we call those carpal bones. And carpus means wrist. So when we're looking at the movement of this joint, we have to look at it like it, it is a wrist and expect the same type of movements. So in the wrist, especially in the wrist of a human, we have two rows of carpal bones. And there's, there's four in each row. So we have eight carpal bones. And in horses, they have seven carpal bones. So they actually have two rows of three, two rows of three carpal bones. And then in the back of the knee or the wrist is an accessory carpal bone. So they actually have seven. And then they have the cannon bone, which is actually a metacarpal bone. Meta means change. So we're changing from bones of the finger to bones of the wrist, and the same thing with them. They actually have three bones in what makes up their finger or their phalanx, and they have the cannon bone, which is the same bone as the distal finger, the distal bone in our finger. They have the short phalanx, which is the middle phalanx, or the middle bone in our finger, and then they have the long phalanx, which is the proximal phalanx, or the the first bone you come to in a human finger. And then from there, we're going to go up and we're going to hit the metacarpal bones. So the cannon bone is actually the bone that, ch that changes from the finger to the hand and the hand to the wrist. So it's a metacarpal changing to the wrist. So we have that out of the way. So horses are literally standing on the tip of their third finger. And then you have two split bones. And the split bones are just remnant digits of the hand. So that's how they're standing. They're standing this way. And so then we get to the wrist. And because we actually call this a knee, most people think, well, then all it's going to do if it's a knee is just flexion and extension, flexion and extension. But if that were the case, your horse would be walking like a little toy soldier horse. You know, it's, it's just going to be extending the leg and putting the leg down and extending the leg and putting the leg down. And we all know that there's a little swing to the leg. The leg, the leg when it comes forward, is actually swinging out and landing. So in order for that movement to happen, you have to have some rotation in the knee or in the wrist. And so that's rotation in the, in the knee is, is called an accessory motion. 
And if the accessory motions are not occurring properly, then it's going to limit the primary motion, which is flexion and extension. So if you have a horse that's short coming out, right, short coming out into extension, then it doesn't necessarily mean it's an issue with flexion and extension in the knee. It could also mean that there's an accessory motion that's not moving properly. So anytime an accessory motion of a joint isn't moving properly, it's going to affect the primary motion. So you have to clear the entire knee. And so what I do is when I'm checking the knee, I'm going to pick up the leg and I'm going to ask her to flex her knee for me. I'm just going to pick up, pick up the leg and flex the knee. And so I go around in circles at the knee. So I'm checking that accessory motion and I'm making sure that she can rotate one way and she can rotate, there's a little release right there, and rotate the other way comfortably and then I'll bring the knee out and check it in its primary motion which is flexion and extension. But they have to be clear in that accessory motion and if you don't check it, you can easily have a knee that's not extending properly or comfortably simply because there's a limitation in range of motion and rotation at the knee. So that's what I wanted to discuss today. Just give you a little bit of education on the anatomy of this joint. Um, help you understand why it's actually a risk, why there's circumduction. And again, circumduction is just the ability to rotate in a circle. And because I can rotate in a circle like this at my wrist, and I can do that both directions, I'm going to expect that she is able to do the same thing, which she can. And that's the accessory movement of the equine knee. And again, keep in mind, I've got two rows of four bones. People have two rows of four bones uh, of carpal bones, and they have two rows of three. So because they have fewer bones, that's fewer joints, that's decreased or less range of motion than we have, but that circumduction is still clearly there, and it's a very important motion to check when you're getting your horse adjusted. So if you have any questions about the about this or any other topics or you'd like to learn more about what I do with Sport Four Horse Chiropractic, you can visit me at sporthorsechiropractic.com. You can check out my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash sporthorse chiropractic, or you can check me out on Instagram at sporthorse chiropractic and Twitter at sporthorse chiropractic. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.